joining us to discuss Tony Pascarello, Goldman's macro client coverage head. Uh, Tony, good to see you. Thanks for joining us as always. Thanks, Will. Great to be back. So we, we always discuss when you come on uh, not just the, the pointers in the survey, but how it's changed month on month. And the broad one on, on terms of outlook for the S&P 500 was still more bearish than bullish, but less pronounced way than last month. That is exactly correct. And so I think what we find most interesting about that is that comes in the context of remarkably good returns. So 2019, a 31% total return in S&P, the second best year in the past 22 years, and yet on net a very balanced bull versus bear skew. So when we look for signs of excessive risk taking uh, or, or uh, irrational exuberance, to, to, to coin an old phrase, we just do not see it in our sentiment work. It is interesting looking at this because you also asked the question about which major equity market do you expect to perform the best, and it still continues to be the S&P. Exactly correct. Now, if you take a quick step back, in the post-crisis period, S&P 500 has now returned over 500 percent in total returns. So it's been the best game in town, at times the only game in town internationally. And our franchise flow and our survey work reflected that. What is interesting, though, if you were to look month to month, period to period, clients are starting to shift more chips into other buckets relative to the S&P. And the one that stuck out this time around was Europe and the UK. I think that partly reflects the outcome of the UK election at the end of the year. And I also think it partly reflects the view that growth in the rest of the world in 2020 is apt to catch up a bit to the US. And there's a, a shift in sentiment towards gold as well. There is. And so this was a, a very clear takeaway from the survey, a four to one ratio of bulls to bears. Gold's been a high velocity asset. It's coming off a good year, up 18% yeah. last year. It just broke out to a six-year high. Gold is in the eye of the beholder, but we'd say there's two features that seem to be appealing right now to the institutional trading community. One is, uh, in the context of, let's call it increased geopolitical tension, it's viewed as a safe haven. And the other is, in the context of lower rates, in particular lower real rates, gold typically performs very well. Tony, is it possible that that irrational exuberance actually is just stuck in a handful of stocks, bringing it back here to the U.S. and the S&P 500? When you think of Microsoft, Apple, they're up, you know, 60 percent, 100 percent year over year. These are companies with 1.2, 1.3 trillion dollar market caps, you know, respectively. Is that where the exuberance is? So what I, Dan, what I find remarkable about S&P 500 is there are moments of rotation. There are moments of cyclicals versus defensive, growth versus value, painful rotations at times. On net, the index itself, as it's constructed, just continues to make a higher high. So sometimes we worry or wonder about uh, the narrowness of leadership, uh, but that hasn't stood in the way of the market just continuing to deliver outstanding returns.